my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Today's Friday, and that was Jesus' cry from the cross. Um, a cry of aloneness, a cry of desperation, uh, a cry of dejection. There are times I really struggle to uh, crawl into the skin of a biblical personality, but not this one. Uh, most of us, in fact, can relate to a time when we felt alone or dejected. Um, we felt uh, somehow isolated from resources or, or, or people joining us to move ahead in life. And that's exactly where Jesus is at. Um, one of the stories that comes to my mind as I think about this is a uh, time, I think I was 10 years old, my dad was being deployed to Cambodia. He was in the army. He was going to be gone a year. And I remember going to the airport to send him off. And he had a large duffel bag uh, that he was taking with him. And I had scribbled a note to him about my love for him and my, my desire for him to come back and, and be safe while he was gone. And I had grabbed a purple rabbit's foot that was one of my cherished possessions at that point. And uh, while he was saying goodbye to my brothers and my mother, I snuck over to his bag and unzipped it. And I, I tucked it into his bag and zipped it back up. And he came over to me and he knelt down. Again, I'm fourth grade. And he looked into my eyes and he said, uh, you're the man of the family while, while I'm gone. And uh, I want you to take care of your brothers and take care of your mom. And I'll be back soon. I love you. And he gave me a big hug. And I, I manned up and I gave him a hug and kind of pulled the lump in my throat down. And we went home. And I, and I held it together all the way home. But as soon as we pulled into our driveway, I, I, I got out of the car. I went into the front door, ran down the hallway, shut the door to the bathroom, and I just sobbed. I cried um, the cry of the forsaken. Someone without hope and without resources, without um, even the courage to keep going forward. It was really, really sad. And I think some of that was what Jesus is crying out. He says, um, my God, why have you forsaken me? So I certainly felt forsaken with my dad away and not feeling like I had any resources to do the things that he asked me to do. But was I really forsaken? I mean, I had my mom, I had my brothers, uh, I, I guess I had God, um, though that wasn't a reference point for me at that point. But my forsaken feeling, uh, back up, my Forsaken feeling really wasn't reality. I had resources. I, I had things, people to depend on. It makes me think of Hebrews 13, 5, where God says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And then I jump to um, 1 Corinthians uh, 13, you know, the love chapter. At the end of that chapter, it says, now we see through a glass darkly, or, or we see dimly in a mirror. We don't have accurate perspective. I brought an object lesson. So it's almost like I would be looking at life through the bottom of a, a jelly jar where everything I see is sort of distorted. Everything, I, I kind of get the general idea of what things look like, but everything is slightly skewed. Here, you try. So everywhere that you look, even at my pretty face, it just looks slightly out of whack. And so Jesus is saying, uh, Paul is saying really, that uh, the things we see this side of heaven are slightly askew. We don't have perfect perspective. So faith is putting my confidence in God when my perspective on reality, it, it just looks like he's not here. It looks like I'm forsaken. I, I feel like I'm forsaken. And yet I can trust that he really is there. He really... Uh, does care. He really is a resource for me in times of challenge. So let me go back to the end of that verse in 1 Corinthians 13. It says that we we see through the bottom of a jelly jar, but Eugene Peterson in the message says this, we don't see things clearly. We're squinting in the fog, peering through a mist, but it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then, see it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly, just as he knows us. Yep. So 
back to Jesus on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Certainly he was feeling alone. Certainly his experience was isolation and uh, separation. But really what what I think he was doing was quoting from Psalm 22, which begins, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And goes on to be a prophetic psalm that outlines exactly the experience Jesus was having on the cross. Meaning that the cross was not an accident. It was not a plan B. It was not sometime when the Father fell asleep and Jesus had to go on to, to, to find his own way, but it was a part of the plan from the beginning. And at the end of Psalm 22, we get these words. Verse 24, For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. Now, I don't want to presume to be able to crawl into the mind of the Father God. And he may have had to turn his back on the Son on the cross as Jesus became sin for us. But I also think that Hebrews 13, 5, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you, was equally true for Jesus as it is for us today. And that the Father, with pride over the Son's obedience and tremendous love for the Son, Uh, gazed on to the broken body of Jesus on the cross and said, that's my son. He is carrying out the complete plan of redemption just as we uh, planned it from the beginning of time. I don't think Jesus was alone. I think Jesus wanted to call our attention to the reality that sometimes we feel forsaken. But God, he has to be present. He he chooses to be with us in in the deepest part of our our hurts and our pain. So I wonder today, as you reflect on this Good Friday where Jesus hung on the cross and said, my God, why have you forsaken me? If you might want to think about experiences in your own life where you feel forsaken, you feel alone, you feel rejected, and you might want to to confess to God that that is your perspective of reality through the bottom of a jelly jar. That you don't see it maybe quite as clearly, certainly not as clearly as he does. And I wonder if you just need to ask him for faith to trust him today, uh, that he's got a good plan and that he is not a God that forsakes, but he's a God that's present with you. Ask him to to show you where he is in in your pain. Um, Ask him to to be your God in the midst of the reality of your feeling forsaken today. And have a great good Friday.